One of the kings of the mobile world, Samsung has built itself into a massive mobile and electronics empire. Over the years, the company has evolved significantly, bringing innovation into countless markets, going well beyond just mobile and electronics. Here are 10 facts about Samsung you probably never even heard of. Number 10. Samsung started as a grocery store and a noodle shop. It's hard to think of Samsung as anything except a leading electronics company, but it was many things before it became a multinational corporation. When it was founded in 1938 by Lee Byung-chul, Samsung was first established as a store for trading and exporting goods. This included dried fish, flour and vegetables, and Samsung even created their own noodles for export. Through the years, Samsung went out to try its hand in different industries, like sugar refinery, textiles, and retail businesses. It wasn't until decades later, 1969, when Samsung went into electronics to produce different home appliances like TVs, refrigerators, and air conditioners. This venture soon evolved to develop mobile devices and smartphones to become Samsung Electronics we now know today. Samsung was founded by Lin Byung-chul in 1938 as a trading company. And over the next three decades, the group diversified into areas including food processing, textiles, insurance, securities, and retail. Samsung entered the electronics industry in the late 1960s and the construction and shipbuilding industries in the mid-1970s. These areas would drive its subsequent growth. Following Lee's death in 1987, Samsung was separated into four business groups. Samsung Group, Shinsei Group, CJ Group, and Hansol Group since 1990. Number 9. Samsung means three stars in Korean. Samsung is a company based in Seoul, South Korea, and as such, its name is purely Korean. Samsung is actually a word made of two parts, Sam and Sung, and each of them has a meaning. Sam stands for three, and Sung means stars. Hence, combined together, Samsung literally translates as three stars, or tri-star. This Korean symbol, Hanja, stands to signify something that Samsung is big, numerous, and powerful translated from the Sam Hanja and eternal as in the Sung Hanja. Summing it all up, we have something big, powerful, and eternal embedded right in Samsung's DNA, its brand name. Curiously enough, those same three stars were actually reflected in the company's logo from its earliest days in the 30s, when Samsung was just starting off in the business of a few families of landowners. Now, Samsung employs over 236,000 people across 79 countries, apart from Korea, and it's actually one of the world's 10 most valuable brands. Staggering evolution, isn't it? Before we move on, leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be the first watching new episodes. Number 8. Samsung is much larger than you think. We know Samsung to be the world's leading smartphone and TV manufacturer, but we're greatly underestimating the brand if we only focus on their electronics segment. Since its establishment, the early diversification of Samsung jump-started the company's interest in various industries, ranging from construction to communications. Aside from Samsung Electronics, over 60 different business affiliates and acquisitions make up the conglomerate Samsung Group. Some affiliates of interest include Samsung Heavy Industries for shipbuilding, Samsung CNT Corporation for construction and trading, Samsung Securities for investment services, and Samsung Medical Center for medical services. Samsung Everland even manages the Everland Resort, a famous theme park in South Korea. With its large and multi-industry scale, Samsung employs over 300,000 workers in 74 countries. Put to scale, this number is larger than the total of both Apple's 137,000 and Microsoft's 148,000 employees combined. Furthermore, Samsung dominates its home country's economy, with a conglomerate businesses accounting for about 15% of the entire South Korean GDP. With that said, it's definitely clear that Samsung is much more than just an electronics company. Number 7. Samsung is everywhere, even in your iPhones. If we haven't driven the idea to the ground yet, here we show that Samsung's brand is tied to many products and services that it's almost possible to live a whole life in Korea with only Samsung, from the delivery room up to the grave. You can be born at Samsung Medical Center, live in the Samsung Tower Palace, 
studied at the Samsung-owned Suchukawan University and strictly used Samsung devices and home appliances. Outside South Korea, Samsung is still a recognizable and omnipresent figure, even in places where we don't expect to find the brand. Consider the Burj Khalifa skyscraper, the world's tallest building constructed by the Samsung C&T Corporation, or the multitude of sports teams and competitions sponsored by Samsung Sports. Samsung can even be found in your iPhones and other mobile devices. Like the processor chips, RAM, and OLED screen, many important phone parts are outsourced by different smartphone companies from the leading manufacturer, Samsung. So, if you own any brand of smartphone, you'll always be carrying a small part of Samsung in your hands. Number six, Samsung has a long list of industry firsts, from the first MP3 phone to the first foldable smartphone. Being a pioneering and long-lasting figure in the smartphone industry, Samsung had brought innovation to the table before there was anything to innovate from. Some of Samsung's earliest developments include the first CDMA cellular system in 1996, the first digital TV in 1998, and the first MP3 phone in 1999. Samsung was also the first to include a built-in 10 megapixel camera to bring high-quality photography to the mobile phone. Some of the more recent innovations include the first phones with a curved OLED display and the first foldable smartphones. Some of these firsts were hits and some were misses, but Samsung needs to be commended for always thinking out of the box and striving for meaningful innovation. Number five, the Samsung E1100 feature phone is its top seller phone ever and the eighth of all time. Samsung's best-selling phones are not one of the more recent high-tech models like the Galaxy S20 Ultra or the Galaxy Note 10. It's not even a smartphone. Instead, it's the small and functional feature phone E1110 released in 2019. Despite being released when it was well into the smartphone era, the E1110 still ended up selling upward of a whopping 150 million units until its discontinuance. This number made the E1110 the eighth best-selling phone of all time, behind Nokia's beloved bar phones and the iPhone 6 6 Plus. On the other hand, Samsung's best-selling smartphone is the Galaxy S4, an early S-series liner that has shipped over 80 million units ever since its release in 2013. Like the Nokia 2600, the Samsung E1100 had a sturdy body and offered excellent battery life, 13 days on standby. It debuted in 2009 and became a success due to its affordable price and worldwide availability. The device featured a 1.52-inch display, 1 megabyte of internal storage, and a built-in flashlight for finding stuff in the dark. Number 4. Samsung had a chance to buy the Android OS before Google, but they declined. Before being acquired by Google in 2005, Android was a startup company going around the globe tech giants to look for funding, and one of their targeted companies was Samsung. Engineer Andy Rubin and his small team flew to Seoul to pitch their software to the South Korean giant, but they did not expect to be met with a confused silence from the Samsung board and a resounding no. This rejection was only two weeks before Android was bought by Google for a whopping $50 million. Now, Android is the best-selling OS for smartphones worldwide, with Samsung being the dominant player with a 65% share of all Android devices. So it all worked out in the end, but it's curious to think of how different the smartphone landscape would be if Samsung bought the Android OS just for themselves. Number three, it didn't truly sink in until 1995. Saying you're going to focus on quality and taking that all-important step across the threshold are often two different things, and they certainly work for Samsung. In 1995, Kunhee Lee reportedly found himself frustrated with his product's quality and the company's lack of change. To drive his point home, numerous phones were stacked up high, joined by televisions, fax machines, and other gear. Lee and his board of directors then proceeded to destroy each of these products, even going so far as to break the cases and screens using heavy hammers. As the story goes, Lee made sure around 2,000 employees witnessed this. That day, more than $50 million worth of hardware was destroyed, and a new Samsung was finally born. Following this, the era of new management truly began marked by rapid growth and global success. 
which has only continued to gain momentum in the decades to follow. Samsung fans can thank Lee and his board and their willingness to perform an extreme drop test for the products they enjoy today. Since that day, they've certainly created several firsts in the electronics industry. Number two, Samsung has a military department. Apple's biggest smartphone competitor also makes tanks, self-propelled howitzers, and jet engines. Billed as promoting peace and stability, Samsung Techwin is the South Korean manufacturer's defense branch. It makes surveillance, aeronautics, automation, and weapons technology. Since its launch into the defense industry in 1983, Samsung Techwin has developed and produced artillery systems like the 155mm self-propelled howitzer M109 A2, K9 Thunder, K10 Ammunition Resupply Vehicle, Fire Direction Center Vehicles, Amphibious Assault Vehicles, and other weapons, according to Samsung. Samsung Techwin's flagship K9 is currently used by Poland, Turkey, and South Korea. Number 1. Samsung employs over 489,000 people. While some of you may already know this, Samsung is way more than just an electronics and mobile producer. The Samsung Group has 59 unlisted companies and 19 listed, all with their primary listings on the Korea Exchange. These companies range from construction to financial services, shipbuilding, and even medical industries. The company's combined efforts employ over 489,000 people across 80 different countries, including Korea. Another fun fact, Samsung's construction division built the Burj Khalifa skyscraper in Dubai, which is the tallest building in the world at 2,722 feet. The Burj Khalifa, known as Burj Dubai before its inauguration, with a total height of 829.8 meters, is the tallest structure in the world since 2008. The building was made by Samsung CNT Corporation in a joint venture with Bexis from Belgium and Arab Tech from the UAE. But Samsung CNT Corporation were one of the main contractors. They are best known for its role in notable skyscraper projects. Thanks for watching. Leave the comment down below and let us know what do you think. Don't forget to subscribe for new and upcoming episodes.